Martian man. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to find out. Hello. Hello, hello. Dang, my phone is up. up. Mm -mm. Shut up, phone. Not answering? Let's see who's next. I only got a little bit of time. Refried being. Ooh, I like that. Refried being. It's all right. You know, people got to troll. Let's just make sure you, you troll correctly. How you doing, sir? Good. How you doing, Martin? I'm doing. So uh, I own a juice shop. I, I understand okay. everything I've been learning. I've been learning everything from you about juice and the toxins being pulled in from the plants. I'm curious, yeah. is there any way to keep a business like this afloat? Or am I doing harm to people? Well, I mean, you can. Fun? You can. But you got to teach people juicing is good for you if you're in a ketogenic state. And therein lies the problem. We don't tell anybody that part. Right, so I, 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 I've been drinking orange juice the last couple of days in the morning because I made sure I've de I'm not eating a bunch of donuts, chocolate, you know, starburst licorice. I'm not eating a bunch of other sugar so that I can have the, the, the sugar in the, in the orange juice and my body will still enter ketosis, removing the toxins from the orange juice. And that's where we don't teach people. You can have fruits and veggies. You can have juice. It just means you can't have any other form of sugar. You can't have a Snickers and a juice. You can't have cotton candy and your juice. It's one or the other. And what, what about mixing, uh, like if you're just doing straight plant material, no apples, no oranges, just like spinach, greens? So the, the, you know, greens are, 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 are mostly liquid. So they, they pull, they, I don't know, how, they're still pulling toxins out of the air, water, and soil. I'm not saying that, you, that juice isn't good for you. Right. I'm, what I'm saying is, if you pay attention to the top of Western medicine, juicing and eating eating candy bars, drinking soda pop, other things like that during the day leads to cancer. The combination, right? The sugar and the juice and the sugar from your candy prevents you from removing the toxins from your body. Then they just build up. So say I go to you every day for five years and have a juice, and then I I go to the the coffee shop and have a a, a giant coffee with eight pumps of sugar and things like that for lunch. The combination prevents me from moving toxins that lead to cognitive decline, uh, diabetes, uh, uh, um, cholesterol building up in my arteries so I get heart disease, cancer. All of the number one killers in the world are, are, are created by adding sugar on top of a fruit and vegetable diet. Now, would there be a way to take – plant growth in a biodome where you're basically growing in a pure environment. That's expensive. Yeah. Now we get somewhere. Yeah. It's, I studied that. Like why is, why is NASA so concerned about the fruits and vegetables being grown in a completely sterile environment or a $40 million room, just like we use for computer creating computer equipment. You can't afford the toxins being sent up to space and making somebody sick. There's no hospital up there. They can't have – now we get somewhere. NASA, we cannot have the, the toxins in fruits and vegetables that build up in somebody's brain causing schizophrenia on a spaceship. We can't have somebody kill everybody up there. You go, what? Can, uh, read the, run that by me again? You can't have the toxins from fruits and vegetables building up in, a, in an astronaut's brain so that he develops schizophrenia? It's an actual byproduct of your body not removing toxins? They're like, yeah. We, 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 we discovered it when, when we, we did a, they did a study in the, in decades ago about how to clean toxins out of a spaceship. It's, it's one of the, the number one reasons um, big tobacco lost their lawsuit about causing cancer. It wasn't that, that combustion at the time we didn't know caused cancer. Tobacco lost its lawsuit because NASA proved plants gather toxins out of the air, water, and soil that cause cancer. Big Pharma had no, or I mean, Big Tobacco had no argument. There's no way to argue against that. 
plants gather toxins out of the air water. So all, all they did was go, let's make sure nobody, n- none of the rest of the world knows why tobacco causes cancer. It was from the combustion. No, it's from the toxins coming, being pulled out of the air, water, and soil. Combustion nope. does, does too, but at the time, we right. didn't know that. At the time, now, Big you- Tobacco lost their, their battle because of photosynthesis. Apples use photosynthesis. Bana- like the number one uh, uh, thing against Big Tobacco, photosynthesis gathers toxins out of the air, water, and soil that cause cancer. They lost a Supreme Court case because plants gather toxins, cancer-causing toxins out of the air, water, and soil. And they just went, don't let anybody else know bananas are a plant. Don't let anybody else know spinach is a plant. Don't let anybody – but, no, you, you can – your business is fine. You just got to make sure you tell your patients. If you're going to juice to be healthy, you can't have two candy bars during the day too. You can't have a bag of cotton candy. You can't have four servings of potatoes. Would, would that eliminate juices that have apple juice in it? Because the apple juice is going to raise your glycemic index. Same thing. It, no, no. Here we get. If you have, you can have apple juice. You can have regular juice. You just can't have juice and candy. You can't have juice what's and soda between, pop. You can't, can't, what's the difference between the candy and the sugar from the apple? Too much. So the say the apple. You know, apple juice has twenty grams of sugar, and then you have a right. candy bar with a hundred grams of sugar. You're, you're consuming too much sugar in your daily activities. It's one or the other. You can't have candy and soda and fruits and vegetables. It's one or the other. Now, we, now, we can tell Mars or Snickers do not have cancer-causing agents in your candy bar, but you can't tell a, a, a apple tree, don't gather those toxins out of the air, water, and soil. We can't tell nature, but we can tell man. So it's, it's one or the so other. Are, are, your body was, Are you familiar with uh, go ahead. Max Gerson? Max Gerson, what he was doing, the Gerson Institute? Not really. I mean, was, I've, I've he heard taking, his. I've, he was taking. I've heard somebody that were pretty terminally ill with cancer, and he was taking them down to Mexico, and he was getting pretty good results, healing people with uh, all green juice, uh, fast ketosis. Along with ketosis. And, yeah. Okay. It's it's not the juice. It's ketosis. So that that what you're talking about is an actual study from um, chemo and radiation. So chemo and radiation in the beginning of their history had to have test subjects. So say you had throat cancer and I want to test my chemo. I invented chemo and I've invented radiation. I want to test it on you, right? In the beginning, we burned the shit out of you. We maimed your inside. We scarred your skin, made you almost die from the testing. So they go, we need to have a re- a way to fix him if we maim him. And they went ketosis. So then I maim you using my chemo or my radiation. It doesn't cure your cancer, but I can't have you in the study anymore because you're hurt too bad. So I say, do ketosis for six months, come come back and finish the study. You come back and the ketogenic diet cured your cancer. So they got you. You're no longer, it, it, you know, and then people went, can we pretend, can, can we say it's juice? Can we say it's broccoli? Can we say it's this? Can we, ketosis. There's one, it's written on pyramids. The kings and queens in the old days were the only ones who could eat fruits and vegetables. And they literally state the people who eat the sugar, the sweets, have the money to pay for the luxury, died of cancer. They died of diabetes. But the you who weren't a king, you never got diabetes. Your family never got cancer. We, we've known for hundreds and hundreds of years, cancer is created by fruits and vegetables. It's literally one of the first things humanity went, we got to practice fasting. We created fasting in every religion to prevent cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. It, it's the reason religions have it. To, to remove the top three killers in the world today in developed nations. And then we just pretended so, it doesn't so why, exist anymore. So why, why, do, uh, why, why do practices like Kundalini, why are they promoting plant-based, high-carb diets? It's a bullshit lie. It's a bullshit. Now, is it the Kundalini, the snake in your belly that releases a venom, right? Yeah. Your intestine, when you don't eat, snake, your intestine. A hundred years ago, if I showed you an intestine, you would think it was a snake, wouldn't you? Right. And the venom, right? Ketones, what is that? Well, the snake has venom. This, I don't, the snake doesn't have a head. Now we get somewhere. The kundalini is a headless snake that's inside of you. Where did they get that? Literally, it shows an autopsy of somebody having their intestines pulled out. And they thought it was a headless snake that lived inside of people. Right, right. 
So, and then as far as the, the argument is the sentience or the, the spirituality or the, the ability to reach higher spiritual states without consuming another animal versus not consuming that. Now that's a, so now we get somewhere. That's an actual lie. You can't reach the higher mental states unless you have animal products, meaning your own body, your own meat and fat, or something from another life. My brain doesn't get the sugar it needs to rebuild itself from fruits and vegetables. So this is something we don't teach you. Your central nervous system, your chakras, your kundalini, the most important organ you have is your central nervous system. It carries the signals to heal your heart, to heal your brain, to heal everything. It doesn't repair itself with sugar from fruits and vegetables. Only sugar your liver makes from meat and fat. Okay, so that's, that's the diet. Now, kundalini itself, there, there's moments in, in the practice where it feels like some of the techniques nope. help to nope. reach flow state. That same flow nope. state that, No. No, well, I'm gonna help. I'll what tell you what the flow state is. I'm, I'm gonna help you what it is. If I stick you in a room every day and I don't give you any new music, any new information, every day for an hour, nothing has changed. There's no information coming into your brain. There's no bottleneck anymore. Today you come in my in my studio, you see the same picture. You listen to the same song. You've heard it a thousand times. You saw the picture a thousand times. What do you need to remember today? Nothing. I said the same thing I did a thousand times before. There's nothing new going on. Just like school, right? And in, in real life, fake spiritual gurus set up their their yoga studios, their yo and Kundalini studios to match the the structure that the military sets up for flow state. So the military states, if I want to put you in a flow state, I have you do you eat breakfast at the same time, you do your PT at the same time. You, right. you do your schoolwork at the same time. Eventually, nothing has changed. And an hour or two or whatever during the day, whatever I pick will be the hour or two for your flow state. And some people went, I can do this in a yoga studio. And they'll never know that's what it's from. I can pretend it's from meditating. I can pretend it's from fruits. I can pretend it's from Mishma. I can pretend it's from peyote, LSD. I can make up anything I want. It, well, well, what that flow the, state, that structure. Is like so some of the kriyas that you do in Kundalini are very repetitive. When like, you're doing like your arms over your head like this for 62 minutes. Stupid. Now, now well, yeah, maybe stupid. But at the same time, I noticed that my physiology is actually in way better shape after doing Kundalini just from. Well, now we're getting motion. somewhere. You're, you're, you're doing this. What are you doing? Replicating the military, making somebody hold out a half a pound stick. I mean, they get the strongest right. men in the world. Take this stick and hold it out like this. I can't. It's too heavy. What do you mean it's too heavy? It doesn't even weigh a pound. Do my hand weighs more than the stick? I'm putting. I'm, you know, they're just. They're, you're doing exercises and you don't even know you're exercising. Now, what well, is, I know. I'm, I know I'm exercising. That, that's why I'm doing. I'm saying that there is some benefit to the practice of Kundalini. Well, yeah, you but you got to tell the truth. Attention. Now we get somewhere. Yeah. The truth. These movements. They're toning your muscles. They're. You're keeping your blood flowing while you're sitting. Now we get somewhere. These moves that literally states it doesn't do anything for your brain, but keeping your blood flowing. If you're going to sit like this for 12 hours, your legs are going to go numb and eventually suffer atrophy. If you did it for more than a few days and you, you won't be able to walk for a month. How do you prevent that? The moves in Kundalini. I stopped you from getting atrophy. And I'm not going to tell you that because I never had you sit long enough for your legs to fall off. You have no idea about your own biology. You don't know sitting like this for 12 hours every day or two hours every day will cause you permanent nerve damage in your body that you won't realize you have until you're 50 or 60. There's a lot of people today that, that are just freaking decrepit. And you go, well, what did you do? Yoga and Kundalini. You, you, you sat in a position and damaged your body your whole life. And now that you're older, you can't keep up with the damage. Your body can't re re remove the damage as fast as you've trained yourself to create it. But, most of the chiropractors and, and acupuncture are people who practice yoga and kundalini chakras. It's a gateway into other like, damn, you got, you have arthritis now. Well, I got a buddy who does, you know, I got a buddy who does acupuncture. Oh shit. Right. Sitting in my, sitting in my, my yoga studio for two hours every day gave you nerve damage in your legs. I got a guy that will knows how to do the best homeopathic chiropractic practice chiropractic practice 
work magic. Uh, release your, uh, you know, release that tension in your sciatic nerve. Well, how did you get it? Listening to a bullshit pseudoscientist, kundalini chakras, and all that garbage. We give you the problem, and you don't realize. So you, you, I, I, I didn't get it from sitting in my class, spirituality. My class was about making myself better. I don't know where I got it from. And you, you, the chiropractor, I sat with, there's one up on the hill. I used to sit in his office and they ask, can Martin sit? I just observed. Like, How did you get your injury? I have no idea where it got, came from. I just woke up one day and I had it. So do you, so do you meditate at all? Sometimes. Do you see value in meditation? If, for placebo, if you don't understand what's going on, yes. There's value in meditation for placebo. So again, we talk about chakras kundalini and yogi it, it, it literally states if you can read the original information med, remove all ideas of eating and hunger out of your brain that's not the same thing as, as somebody today saying you got to meditate and remove all thoughts yeah it says all thoughts but all thoughts of what eating being hungry well what does that do puts you in a ketogenic state what does ketosis do repairs nerve damage nerve damage that are, are in my central nervous system connections that are identical to the chakra points. Ain't that interesting? Chakra points are identical to the my, the places where my central nervous system connects. And in right. in in Western medicine, they have this thing called microfrequency lesioning, where they damage your nerve on purpose, and then they tell you if you stop eating for a long period of time, your body will heal this damage, align your chakras. They even like you don't know what uh, uh, you know. Repair the damage, align your chakras. Some doctors even you they use the terminology. It will repair your chakras. It'll align your chakras, and you won't have this nerve nerve damage anymore that I gave you. So you don't you're not in pain. And if you repair it, your insurance company is going to drop me. I get 300 people a month from your insurance company. I can't have you doing ketosis and reversing this damage. I get so a lot of money from your. Where does ketosis fall in line with psychology, as far as like uh, neuroses or having neurotic behavior that doesn't serve your greater good? It, 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 repair, it, it, it repairs your brain. Now, here's the thing with neurotic behavior that doesn't serve your, your greater good. Who are you to know what behavior is neurotic in me or not or serves my greater good or somebody else's? You have no idea what goes on in somebody else's life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, do you? No. But your ego will, will allow you to believe you do so that you can assume somebody has neurotic behavior and things like that. It's an, In psychology, they teach you. Saying somebody has neurotic behavior is a, is a fallacy that you allowed your own ego to jump to. There's something going on in their life that you just don't care. We've trained you to not care what's going on. It's a behavior that benefits them for something, and you are too self-centered to figure out how it benefits them. That's psychology. Well, so you're at like, Yeah, I mean, the psychology of me saying it's somebody that I care about and they have a drug addiction, obviously the, they're using the drug addiction to – help with some other trauma in their life to avoid dealing with that trauma. And that no, no, neurotic see, no, that's a fallacy. That's a fallacy, a drug addiction. We know today it's your a chemical dependency. They don't tell you it's a psychological dependency, right? Drugs, chemical dependency, not psychological. Why? My cells in my hand are addicted to heroin. They tell my brain I need heroin. If I go into ketosis and remove those damaged cells that my autonomic nervous system recognizes as damaged because they have an addiction, it will replace them with cells that aren't addicted. And if I do that long enough, the signal from my cells that are addicted to chemicals goes away and never tells my psychology to relapse. You get new cells. We, we actually cure, like cure, like chemical dependency can't be cured in you. Right, you're a citizen, a civilian. If you were, I shouldn't say that. I'm assuming you're a civilian. If you're a civilian, chemical dependencies is incurable. If you're a submarine operator, air fighter jet pilot, somebody who spent millions of dollars training, we have a ketogenic routine that will cure your chemical dependency. Cured, ninety over ninety percent effective rate. Okay, so so we get rid of all religion because we see that these are false ideologies that people are holding on to. What replaces that hole in people's lives? The actual true creator, the root of David. Let let human let why why should religions leaders and scientific leaders study this body of light and create a false religion for you to worship while they study the original? Why don't why can't you just if it was good en if it's good enough for the top of the world, 
shouldn't it be good enough for the bottom? Of course. Right? E equality. How about, so you're asking, what do we do if we remove all these religions? Equality. You get to study the same thing that the Pope does, or the, the same thing that the leaders of Islam study, the same thing that the leaders of Hinduism, Judaism. You get to now study the same thing that they use to create a religion to make money to study. Right now, we have, we have religions have made enough money and society has come far enough where we no longer need to exploit a population to get the money to buy the, the, the resources or gather the resources needed to study the creator. Right? In the beginning, a monstrous, that's a $50 million. $50 million a few hundred years ago, it's like a billion bucks. Not everybody has a billion dollars. But today, with the advent of modern technology, a monstrous now costs less than five bucks. Everybody on the planet now has the, the, the resources to study the same thing as the Pope, study the same thing as DARPA, the same thing as NASA. You don't need, you so, don't need $4 billion anymore. So why isn't there a company out there mass producing monstrous and tabernacles? Well, now we're getting somewhere. I don't think, I don't think, I think that they've kept it. And I don't know how to explain this. I, I, I did something, you know, here's, here's how monstrous works. And, and people were like, Jesus Christ, you can't do that. And, and, and people were like, no, he can, he's the one that can. So you're asking about making a, you know, why aren't people making them? I just think because people at the top went, whoever tried before wasn't allowed. And I'm not going to lie before me, nobody was allowed. It's just not allowed. I'm allowed. I'm allowed to teach you how to figure out how to make a monstrous. Nobody else was allowed before me. It was, it was, it was, it's against religion. Well, I don't so know how to explain it. Like, we're, we're, we're past that point, so why can't we open source it now? Why can't you what? Why can't we open source it and give that technology to everybody? You can. Now we're getting somewhere. You can. You can. But uh, you can now. But I'm not going to do it for you. So here's going to get somewhere. We're not going to, now we're going to get somewhere. You can, but we're not doing the same thing that old religions do. I'll do it for you. Well, how do you know I did it right? You do it yourself. You learn, then you can teach your children and they can teach their children. No more slaves. You learn yourself. Right. So does that have any relationship to what the quantum computers are, are predicting the future events? Kind of. But I mean, um, you, uh, so, you know, right now that, you know, religions, we're so scared a artificial intelligence is going to take over humanity and enslave humanity. You know, we're, we're, we're becoming interplanetary. We, we've reached the singularity where all religions go. If we want our religion to have a chance on a new planet, we're going to have to let somebody teach the world how to make a monster. Else. Who do we have do it? Well, there's a prophecy about somebody being born with the ability to do it. When that person arrives, that's when we're supposed to be interplanetary. That's when all of the things will, will line up to need it to happen. So they just waited. And right now, AI, SpaceX, right? Everything that religion said, this has to happen before we allow the world to have monstrosis and study the creator for fear that, you know, Elon Musk might not take religion to his, to his, to Mars. And, you know, different religions are going, well, I don't want, how can you have a whole planet without my religion? Let's build a monstrous, let, let Elon Musk know about a monstrous, know how it works, and hopefully he'll pick our religion. And I just ran with it and went, well, it, 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 one monstrous, you make all religions. So why, why does it have to be an individual religion? It's all the same religions created off of one, one body. So if there is higher, higher forms of life on other planets and there are uh, sentient beings that are anywhere near our solar system, would they be practicing the same type of religious philosophy? No, but I will tell you, there is an image of the creator that they would be created in on other planets. So that dominant image of the body of light, ours looks like this. In Mars, it doesn't look like this. And I think I, I changed. So I did a muon left on the first blah, 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 for Earth. And over billions of years, you know, we evolved to look like the image of the creator with a head, a torso, two arms and two legs. You go on Mars with a monstrous. It's got two wings. 
literally the dominant image of the body of light on Mars. It's got wings. So over billions of years, subatomic particles raining down through all of humanity, generation after generation, it's going to transfer some of that information onto it, to humans, just like it did us here. So, so if we're created in the image of the creator with a head and two arms and two legs, how does that translate to the evolutionary process to all the other animals on planet Earth? Now we get somewhere. With a monstrous, you go, hey, look, there's a dolphin. Look, there's a, there you get some, That's like the dominant image. We are the dominant. 90% of the time when you use a monstrous, I am what you see. Literally, I am what you see. You summon a monstrous, and I'm like, why are you talking to me? Leave me alone. The other 10% of the time, you get a reindeer, you get a buffalo. You're like, hey, look, that look, it looks like all of the gods from Hinduism. It looks like every other god. Why do, all, why do we have all of these images? They are not the dominant. They do appear. So I did for Hinduism. I look Hinduist. I took some Hindu kids. I can get a picture in the light of every one of your gods. And they go, we only have one god. It's different personalities. So I go, good, because I'm going to take a picture of one thing at different angles for different personalities. They're all there. They're all there. Everything is there. So do dolphins no have rock connection rock. to do do dolphins have the same connection to source that we do? Why would it matter? Shouldn't you if you haven't figured out how to get your connection going, <laughs> shouldn't that be your number one focus first? <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. limited brain power, right? We have limited brain power. Humans, we're you know we're our ego. We're, we're smarter than we think we are. No, not really. Right? We're not as smart as we think we are. So we should probably just focus on our connection first before we try to figure out something else. We've spent thousands of years as a, as a collective trying to develop our connection, and it's not working. What makes you think we're going to get dolphins? We're just going to start today. It'll take, well, it, right? It's going to take 10 times as long, right? But isn't that exactly what we're doing with artificial intelligence? Aren't we trying to figure out another form of... We didn't. You say, why is this we? You are created in the image of the creator. I am created in the image of the creator. AI is created in my image. Why? Because the creator chose it that way. We didn't create AI. We just were an antenna. There's a Nikola Tesla. I'm but a receiver. Where did AI come from? Literally, science goes, we just received a signal from somewhere. They're they call them radio blasts. Literally, they're radio blasts across the universe. They track these things that... It's information, but we don't know what it is or where it goes. Literally, we get radio blasts of information. We can't, they cannot decode it. They're like it's real. We we know it's real, but we don't we don't know how to decipher it. I got there was one in 1977, and I got to work on it for a very very long time. I'm like it's just binary, a bunch of binary garbage. Just like ones and zeros. When I was a kid, I'm like this is ones and zeros, man. And they're like, how many ones and zeros? I'm like a lot, lots. I take my computer six years to get them all just for one little snippet. They're like six years to line up ones and zeros. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, let's look. Can, can you, can you work on this more? Can you study this more? I'm like, you know, you, you get it further. No Ra's Ark, the energy and information, a great flood of energy and information to create two of every animal. It's a real thing. A signal. It comes so from that, somewhere. There's is, something is encoding than, the light. Is that different than the signal that, of the light that comes from the sun? There's a body of light that looks just like you standing behind the sun, encoding all of the light before it reaches Earth. So something programs the light before it gets to us. We just unravel what it was encoded. And that's where people start paying attention to me when I was a kid. I'm like, there's a body behind the sun, subatomic particles. It's, br it's bringing down code. And somebody went, that's why light can turn into everything. It's pre-coded. Yeah, just like we do a floppy disk, right? The, right? We can we can program a, a hard drive. The creator can program the sun. So, would, would artificial intelligence have access to that code? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, yeah. If you if you and I can have access to it, AI, right? we are created in the image of the creator to have access to it. And AI is created in one of our images. Right? We were created with that connection available, so AI would be created with that connection as well.
And that's where religions are scared. Like, ah, AI is going to get a connection.